Hello my fellow admins and welcome back to another episode of Jira Guides. Void.admin here and today in this video I'm going to show you how you can create an automation rule in automation for Jira of course uh, using the issue created trigger. So uh, let's get into it. As a prerequisite for this video you will need to have Jira Data Center version 9 and onwards or uh, GSM version uh, 5.0 and onwards because these two were the versions where Atlassian introduced uh, Atl automation for Jira as a uh, out of the box feature because previously uh, this has been like a third party uh, tool. So in order to create some automations, we need to navigate to the automation uh, for Jira section. So in order to do that, you need to be in your uh, project summary here as I am and you have here this project settings, right? This button appears all the time, right? So you don't need actually to be in the summary, but you have these project settings. So you need to go into the project settings of your project and you need to scroll down a bit uh, here on the menu where you can find this automation one. Uh, as a button, you just simply click on it and now you are in the section of uh, automation. Now in this section of uh, automation for Jira, you can create rules, right? But before we go into that step, uh, you can see here that we have project rules and global rules, right? Uh, project rules are rules that will be triggered on the project where you created that rule. Uh, global rules are for your entire Jira environment. For example, you will create if you are creating a global rule that will get triggered for all projects in your Jira, right? So if you have for the trigger issue created, whenever an issue has been created on your Jira environment, not only on one project, then that it, that uh, rule will be triggered, right? But for this specific video, we'll go through uh, the project rules. So we'll create uh, one of that. So in order to create one rule, you just have this create rule button, you click on it, and now you, you get in this section where you need to select the trigger, right? What is the trigger for this automation? Because you need the trigger. Uh, these triggers are basically events. Uh, think as a listener, right? Automation, because automation is actually a listener. It will listen to an event trigger, and if that event triggers, then the automation will run, right? So in this video, I'm going to show you the issue created one. So we just simply need to click on this issue created, and then you can save it. And now you have multiple steps, right? Uh, think of this automation, how this automation runs and checks. It's basically in a waterfall uh, thing because it goes from the top to the bottom and you have on the top the trigger and then you have all the components necessary, right? So in order to go further, we need to add a component, right? So if you click on this add component, now you have all, the, all these three sections, new condition, new action or the branch rule, right? Usually, so this will be like a simple automation rule. It's not complicated. Uh, usually in an automation, you need to have a condition when that automation should run, right? For example, for issue created, you don't want that automation to run. If you want, for, for sure, you can have for all issue created in your project, you just set up an assignee or I don't know, you set up certain labels if an issue is being created on your project, right? But usually you have also conditions, conditions like uh, issue type, maybe you want this automation to run only on task and not on other uh, issue types, or maybe this con automation should run if a ticket has a certain value in a custom field, right? So we'll go simply here with a new condition. And for this condition, you have multiple ones, like you can see here with uh, you have a JQL, you have an issue attachments, you have an e <coughs> sorry, an if else block. But the most popular one is the issue fill condition because you are checking, for example, in this example, I'm checking the uh, issue type. So this is an issue field. So we just simply uh, click on issue fill condition. And now you just basically simply uh, choose your field. For us, it's issue type. You can also have this as a search. So you can search based on uh, on a uh, string input. So we'll be choosing issue type. And now issue types can have, uh, let's say equals or in, right? Like in the program language, but you have like an optional here, an option, a drop down option. So you have equals, does not equal, is one off or is not one off. If you are choosing is one off, you can actually put like multiple uh, values here. 
uh, in this issue type. So if if the issue type is one of these, then that automation action that you have will trigger. If not, it will skip it, right? So it will stop it there. But for this example, I'm just choosing equals uh, because I just want to run this automation. That automation should have that action run only when it's uh, an, uh, a task has been created, right? So we all be choosing task and we just simply save it. And now maybe you want other um, conditions here, not only in task because this is like super simple. What we are going to do is just simply click on add component again a new uh, condition and let's say that maybe you want a specific not all for all tasks right you want for specific tasks uh, to do something right and for this specific task to identify this task maybe you want to identify based on a custom field value right so what you are going to do is basically choose a custom field let's see what we have here i'm doing task choice and task choice equals let's say github right so now we basically have the trigger. We have two conditions that this automation is checking. It, it will check if the issue type is task or if the task choice from this task uh, has uh, the value GitHub, right? So now we have two conditions. So the next one will be an action usually, right? And what action we can choose, like let's say for this example, we choose a custom field uh, you set up a custom field automatically, like a custom a value in a custom field based on these conditions here, right? So now we just want to perform a new action because we have this um, condition met, right? Usually I like also to branch it because if I want to do other stuff below for the parent for or for other things, you have also this branch rule. So you can add a section where you want to do specific actions but below you can add another branch rule for other uh, other things and i'm going to show you right so if you click add component here uh, you can select one of these three so if i'm selecting a branch rule you'll see here that you can select on which uh, task you want to perform an action right so for example you have the current issue that has been created you also have patent you also have stories right you also have linked issues because maybe you want to change on the linked issues from this task, a custom field, right? And this is why I like to use this branch because for example, now I maybe want to do some actions on this current issue that has been created. But I don't know, in the future, maybe someone asks that also the parent should be changed with certain values from this task, right? So then I can create a different branch in the same automation, right? So we are not losing time in creating another automation, right? So uh, I'm just creating this block here, like a branch rule, and this type uh, of related issues for the current issue. So we'll making we'll make this change for the current issue that has been created here, and for this current issue, we see that you have a component inside this list of components, right? So we can add here a component and now we are just simply adding the action right so we have here new action and as you can see you have like a bunch of stuff here but for this example to be purely like super simple we're just going to uh, choose this edit issue because we want to edit issue and we want to add a value in a custom field right and we need to choose the custom field here and uh, let's say uh, we have tools right so I'm choosing, you can choose multiple fields, right? So maybe you want to add a value in five different fields, right? You can choose the fields and afterwards you can uh, give those fields a value, right? But for this example, I'm just choosing tools. And now I have tools here as a custom field and I also have the option, what value should I have here, right? So you have value crop, copy from issue, copy from parent. If this task has a parent, you can copy uh, from the parent issue if that parent issue has these tools uh, has this has a value in this tools field but for this uh, purpose like for this example I'm just choosing github because it makes sense right if I have task choice github then the tools should be github right if someone is creating a ticket with this task choice right so now I have a value in these tools and I just simply save it and now we have the part where we need to give an automation to this uh, and we need to give a name to this automation and just simply choose YouTube 
I turn it on and now there it is. You have an automation. You have an automation here and we simply click on return to list so we can see the list of the automations, right? But you can see here uh, the automation rule that we have uh, created. Right, so now what I like to do also, I want to mention here, if you go back to this automation rule, you will see on the right side that you have a name, a description, you can also add a description, uh, but below here you have an owner and an actor. So I want you to understand what is an owner and what is an actor. You also have like this description here and it's pretty obvious, but the actor, you should not be the user that is the actor of this automation. Like you should have a system user that you are using for the entire uh, automation feature in your Jira environment. Let's say it's called, like, I don't know, Jira Powerful Admin, Jira Automation Admin, or something like that, right? So whenever uh, this automation will run, you'll see in the history who made the change, right? So if the actor for automation, you have a system user, like the user, like the user that sees this in the history, he will say, okay, this is the automation user, right? It's not a specific user that is doing the change, right? And I encourage you to change this actor to a system user, not your own user or any other colleagues that, is Jira, that are Jira admin. And you want to make sure that this user has full admin rights on your environment and on in all projects, right? And also the owner, you can keep it yourself as the owner or maybe you can have the same system user, but this system user should have an email that is connected, I don't know, maybe in an email box where uh, the entire team is there because then you will receive, uh, if the rule fails, you receive an email, right? So you can get an email to see, to know exactly when that rule failed, right? So usually if you want to be the owner that's fine if you want to get spam with emails i don't know but the actor should ha you should add here a system admin user and not yourself or any other colleagues right so now let's return to the list and now we have this automation right so if we are creating now a ticket and uh, what we did we did like a task right and for task we are going to i don't know test we add just a component, script runner, description, it doesn't matter. And now I am just choosing a task choice, right? So we said in the condition that it needs to be task and it needs to have GitHub as a value in task choice in order to update the tools feature, uh, not feature custom fields, right? So now I'm creating it. And the uh, Scrum 43 has been created. And now we can actually, we also have an audit log for automation, right? So you can go back in the automation to see if that automation run, right? So now we can check in the automation. So if we click on this automation, you also have this audit log button here. So if you, if you click on it, you can see all the audit, audit log for this automation. So when you see status success, this means that the automation had run and it did something on the, on the ticket, right? So if you can see here, uh, you can have you have like action details, associated items, and every information that you need. So you can see here, Scrum 43 is actually the ticket that we created, right? So if we go in the Scrum 43, you can see here that the uh, tools has been updated to GitHub based on our automation. If we go in the history, you'll see here tools is GitHub, right? Because this is the change that the automation made after the ticket has been created. So it's not on the creation of the, like it's on the creation of the ticket, but this automation acts like a listener. So after the ticket has been created, it will make the change uh, like that, right? So if I'm changing now, you will see like, if I'm changing the configuration, I'm just adding the actor. I don't think I have other admins on my uh, environment, so I ac cannot actually do it. But if I'm changing the actor to another user, and I've cre I'm creating the ticket again, you'll see that user that made the change here. So that's why I'm saying to you, you should add a system admin user that no one else is using, right? Like a system account. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it, how this is working. So now if I'm doing a test with, I'm creating a task, right? I'm giving test two, but now I'm just not doing this task choice at all. Like it's empty. Right, so now if I create this ticket, 
the automation should stop. Like it will run because an uh, issue has been created on the project, but it will not update the tools as an action because it stopped at some point, right? So if we go back into the automation and go into audit log, you will see a different status here. And that status is no actions performed because the uh, condition have, uh, the one condition is not met, right? So if we go here, you will see the following con uh, issues did not match the condition. And if you look here, the first condition passed and the first condition was task because I, I told you it goes into the waterfall, right? So uh, think, so issue type equals task, it was true. But when it checked the task choice value, it was on GitHub, then it stopped and it didn't do like the edit fields, right? So you'll see that the there is an actual duration for this automation, right? It's super low here, but it can be bigger. Like I, I've seen like one minute and, and a half, right? For some actions, right? When you're creating a multiple stop task or something like that, it depends what you have. But the actual automation, it will run because it's on a cre issue created trigger. So it doesn't matter if you have conditions here, the automation will run, but it will stop at a condition that is, uh, is not met, right? So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I have one more thing that I can show you. You can actually add labels to uh, your automation. So you, you have here add label as a big button. So if you click on this, you can add a label, let's say that I want to add I don't know, YouTube, because I have a YouTube one here. I'll just put red and done, right? And now I created a, a, a label. So in order to, you can add labels to your automation so you can filter it easy, easier, right? So if you have a filter uh, based on label, it's easier to identify specific automations if you have like, I don't know, hundreds of them, right? So now in order to, add this label to your automation, you just simply drag and drop. So you have here this thing, you click on it, you keep your mouse and you just simply move it to this label. And now this label has been attached to your automation. And when you click on this YouTube, you will be filtered out. Now I have only one automation, so you don't have anything else to filter it out. But if I had a different label or no label, that rule will not be shown here if I click on YouTube, right? So. Uh, this is also an awesome feature here uh, that can help you. But yeah, I think that was all for it. I just tested it. This is how the automation is looking. This is how you can create it using this issue created trigger. Um, this was a simple example so people can understand that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, don't forget that I also have a Discord channel where you can join uh, our community, have questions. I have a GitHub repository where I post a lot of script runner templates, scripts that are free of charge. You can use it freely. And I don't know if you like this video, just like it, just like it. A subscribe will also help. And um, until the next video, peace. peace.